Sup, squaws. YouTube's been real strict with the community guidelines. So if you're over 18, you're cool. But if you're not, don't watch this. I hit record a job, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now, these cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte like I play for Hornets. When I'm performing, never boring, now you can't afford it. Champagne Perrier, finished friends on my face. Looking like I'm from the D, D's no Cartier. Pockets deep, 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 bro. I can make it in my seat, bro. Do you and do me, bro. Making noise, use a beat. What's up squaws, we're back at it once again, and this is part two of the Purple Tie Auto Grow. Congratulations, Brianna, Fiora, Lisa, Tom, and Matt on winning the New Year's giveaway. Our next giveaway is for the Dabtron. To win this electric dab ring, comment what strain you want me to grow next down below. We left off at week 5 when the plants were just going into pre-flowering. It's now week 6 and the stretch has just begun. The plants are a little dry so we're going to water them with the same tea we used last time. Worm castings, blackstrap molasses, and water soluble kelp. The water's pH between 6.2 and 6.8. Remember not to drown the base of the plant. You want to encourage root growth by saturating the outer edge. Wait for it to drain by watering other plants, then come back and rewater. I'm using a two gallon sprayer and I take the tip off. It lets the perfect amount of water out. I'm using 5 gallon smart pots, so water is going to leak out the sides. I overwater about 10%, and the water will get sucked back up through the bottom. That's the good thing about spill trays and smart pots, in addition to the oxygen pruned roots. As you can see, the bottom foliage is starting to yellow. The plant's pulling all the nutrients from the oldest leaves first. It's pulling all those nutrients to put its energy into budding. And even after their pre-flower stretch, the internodal spacing on these plants is very small. 
they are short and stocky, and this hybrid's traits lean toward an indica-dominant plant. We can expect densely stacked buds, which is why this plant is great for small growths. She packs serious weight for the area she takes up, and it's extremely low maintenance, so we'll check back in on them at week 7. But for now, that's it. It's week seven, and these plants are looking just like Guy Fieri. The pistols are white, and trichome production has already started. And as predicted, the bud formations are dense. These plants are going into overdrive, and their need for nutrients is increasing. The nutrients in the soil would have been depleted if we didn't inoculate it a few weeks prior. We'll keep an eye on them for any deficiencies and amend the soil as needed. Week 8 is here, and the leaves are tipped up. This is known as praying. Leaves pointing up is usually a sign of healthy, fast-growing plants that are getting a lot of light. Maximizing light intensity improves growth rates and yields as long as you pay attention. Find the sweet spot and give plants as much light as possible without triggering light stress. As long as leaves are staying green, there's probably nothing to worry about. Just remember that if leaves are praying for a long time, sometimes they get overworked and start turning yellow earlier than you'd like. The back middle plant is experiencing nitrogen toxicity, as you can see by the leaf tips curling down. Since I'm not giving them any extra nitrogen, the best option is to flush that plant and let it deplete the soil of nitrogen on its own. This phenotype is more sensitive than the others, as it's the only one experiencing these symptoms. The downside of too much nitrogen in flower is airy buds. As long as it doesn't persist deep into flower though, we'll be fine. In week 9, the plants are putting on mass. We had an incident where a power outage knocked out my electric. It reset the AC, so temps hit 89 for a day and a half, dehydrating some of the weaker foliage on the bottom. It also curled some of the leaf tips, but luckily that was all. They were thirsty, so we watered them and added a little B52, which contains all forms of vitamin B, some chelated calcium and humic acid. All of these ingredients help improve water absorption, build stronger cell walls, and reduce shock. These plants need some TLC after that stress, so we'll fix everything and come back next week. I got the game in the fire script. Way up when the fire is clear. All my niggas on the flight list. Probably gifted. Take the plot and I twist it. Got a big lit. Sex with the incense. Got my mind rants. Won't stop from a lens. As you can see, the plants recovered nicely. You can see three of the phenotypes are fading a rich purple with bright orange pistils, while the other three are purple and green with frosted white hairs.
these girls are in full bounce back. The heat only made them stronger and frostier. Despite my set it and forget it method for these plants, they are looking great. The environment corrections allowed these girls to recover fast, and now they are just pumping out trichomes. They're also showing a beautiful autumn fade with insane reds, yellows, oranges, and purples. The breeders suggested flowering time is 70 to 80 days. That's 10 to 11 and a half weeks. I can estimate that we're behind about a week from the heat stunting the flower. And even though these plants are really filling out, more dramatic changes are still to come. Week 12 is here. This is what the plant will look like when it's days from finishing. The optimum harvest time will depend on what you intend to do with the plant. If you're making fresh frozen, you'll want to harvest early. If you're flowering plants for consumption, a ratio of 75% cloudy and 25% amber trichomes is usually the sweet spot, which is why you'll want to check the trichomes daily with a microscope. For dry sift hash makers, a 50-50 ratio will give you a larger return. It seems complicated, but it's really not. Think of each trichome like a fruit. It grows to protect the plant from the sun. It starts as a stalk, the fruit develops and ripens from clear to cloudy, and then the amber. We're taking it a step further. We want to let these swell as much as we can so any seeds will be fully developed. For seeds to finish, they need to go deep into flower. That means around 75 days for most strains. A word of caution for those wanting to get some self-pollinated seeds. There is a diminishing return in potency when letting the buds mature to the point of self-pollination. So keep that in mind if you're looking for potency. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thanks, but you and I both know why that is. So do us both a favor and subscribe to my channel, like the video, and if it helped you out, share it with your friends. And remember, to join the giveaway you have to be 18 plus and comment what strain you want me to grow next down below. The winning comment will be featured in part 3, where we'll cover the harvest and processing of this purple tie from Ethos. Thanks for growing with me, and I'll talk to you all in the comments.